let the sun shine, let the sun shine. Well, today on Love the Way You Live, we have the one and only reality TV star, Miss Nita Clem, in the house What's from that? Flipping Exes on Bravo. <laughs> How you that? doing? Welcome. Thank you. I'm so excited to be here. Thank you so much. I'm so glad to have you in here to talk about all your experiences as a realtor and what we do on a daily to what you're doing on the show and what you're doing in just regular life. So welcome to the show. Well, thank you. Thank you so much. I'm happy to be here. That's good to have. Glad to have you. Glad to have you. So Nina, everybody, is based in Indianapolis. Yes. She lives in Carmel, Indiana. Correct. And she is currently right now on the show Flipping Exes on Bravo. What day did that come on? It came on on Tuesdays. It's, it, it aired in um, August. And okay. They're doing reruns now. They're doing reruns now. Okay, yeah. great. Okay. But still go check it out if you haven't seen it yet. There you go. You can go to YouTube and all her channels yes. and her Twitter Amazon and Facebook and, and all yeah. of that good stuff. And we'll put all that up on the uh, podcast, you guys, when we get out there. But right now, Nina is a realtor with a good client roster here in Indianapolis. She services all the CEOs in Indy, the professional athletes, which there are a number of professional teams here. Um, and, you know, she's selling and helping um sell all the million uh what what do they call you the beverly hills oh, of the midwest <laughs> the beverly yes carmel's the beverly hills of, of the, the midwest, midwest yes, the midwest. yes. <laughs> <laughs> only in indy i know right <laughs> <laughs> well you had to give it a name you know we needed to stand out a little bit this so it's gonna true. be a little creative this right? is true this is true so let's let's first get into your background okay where are you from? Where did you where did you grow up? I grew up just outside of Boston. Okay. So I'm um, born and raised, love the East Coast, miss it, miss mm. the seafood. I yes. really want myself a lobster roll, but <laughs> can't have one in Indy. But one of these days when I go back home. But I've um, been here for, I, I, you know, I've been saying 10 years, but it's actually been 12 years. Okay. So I'm like, man, I'm getting old. This right. is crazy. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, uh, born and raised in the East Coast and been here for 12 years. What brought you to Indy? So I was married at the time, okay. so I was legally obligated to come here, and I, I kind of came here kicking and screaming because I was like, Indiana, what is in Indiana? I've right. never been to Indiana. Right. And my ex-husband at the time, he was not the one, I'm not doing the show with him, this mm -hmm. is my ex-husband, um, He, well, his family was here, and so he wanted to spend half the time here and half the time back in New England. Okay. And so we did. Okay. <laughs> And now for a little bit. For a little bit. Yeah, and then we got a divorce, and he left, and I stayed. Now, do you, was the reason for the divorce for you bringing you to Indy? <laughs> <laughs> no. No, it actually wasn't. And, and oddly enough, my mm -hmm. ex-husband and I are like BFFs. Like, okay. we talk all the time. That's like, we're, we're, we have a great relationship. It just, great. our marriage just, it just work. Yeah. work. Yeah. You just got married young? We did. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, Grew sometimes apart. young and dead. And not even like he's always been my best friend. And he okay. always will until the day I die. But okay. it just, you know, marriage. And we had kid, kids like back to back, mm -hmm. like 12 months apart, like okay. 12 and a half months apart. So okay. I don't, I, as much as I love kids, I don't recommend that. It's kind of hard on marriage. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like when they're so little, you right. know. Mm -hmm. But it, it is what it is. Okay. Now, when you. Uh, moved from Boston to mm -hmm. Indy. Were you in real estate at the time? No, I actually was a stylist, a fashion stylist back in Boston. All right. All and right. I had um, I had a company there for about five years, and I traveled all over the U.S. and I had clients that mm -hmm. were, you know, owners of businesses to professional athletes, and and um, and I loved it. But when I moved to Indiana, you know, I, I couldn't really do it here, right. <laughs> and right. I had children, so I became a stay-at-home mom for a few years. Okay. Okay. Then what got you into real estate? Well, that's a funny story, okay? Yeah, let's um, talk about that. Okay, <laughs> this, is, this is funny. I'll, I'll try not to be too long winded because I am long winded. But mm -hmm. um, I was extremely into a church here back in the day when okay. I was going through the divorce and stuff. And mm -hmm. I was just praying one day. I didn't know what I was going to do because, you know, my ex husband, you know, like, he left and, um, and I just didn't know from a career standpoint how I was going to take care of two small children now. Right. And being a fashion stylist was not, not it wasn't yeah. in the cards right. anymore. So, especially in Indy. Especially in Indy, yeah. yeah. And um, I was just, I, I was praying and I was fasting. And okay. I, the true story, I didn't know what I was going to do. Okay. And um, people might think I'm crazy for saying this, but you asked and I'm, mm -hmm. I'm going to tell the truth. So I just felt like the Lord put on my heart to go into real estate. Right. And at first I was like, mm, I don't even like houses like that right. so no that must you not know be not place. be it mm -hmm. and then everybody in my church was like oh honey that is not the lord the lord does not want you to go into a commission job <laughs> <laughs> 
two kids, you know? And I I was like, no, I really feel like I heard the voice of the Lord. I really right. feel like this is what I'm supposed to do. So mm-hmm. I, I ended up going into real estate. No joke, true story. Mm-hmm. Um, I signed my contract with Tucker. And exactly seven days later, mm-hmm. I get a call from a past client of mine okay. who I used to design all his suits for in Boston because he played for the Patriots and he was moving to Indiana and he wanted to know if he could stay with me, him and his wife could stay with me for the weekend okay. and if I could recommend a realtor. Wow. So my first transaction was a was... $2.2 million house. <laughs> wow. Now that's a good story. It is. And so don't think I didn't go to my church, church and was like, I, I did it with the Lord. You see? I'm not crazy. My God is good. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> My God is a good man. Exactly. Look at Gore. What are you doing? What are you doing? He did. He did. (laughs) I love it. I love it. So I can only imagine after that transaction, you were like, "Okay, this is great money. That was easy. Uh, It's gonna. This is gonna be easy." But then what happened? Then my my next sale was of the house. My next. Mm-hmm. The house was worth $36,000. Wow. So I went from one extreme to another, yeah. which really is what I still do from, mm-hmm. from extremely high end to, to low end as well. Like I, I, I like to keep a, a balance. I like to keep a balance. And I think it's great anyway. I know me as a realtor in New York, it's always about being in a sweet spot mm-hmm. because you have to understand where people livelihood in a particular yep. city, how much people are making in different industries. Yep. And if you stay in that sweet spot, you will always have business. Yep, bread and butter. You will. But when you try to go on one extreme or the other, yeah. you tend to be out of a job or you will not have the business that you The flow. Abs- yeah. Absolutely. You need the flow. And yeah. that's all about volume in, yeah. my, in my day. Yeah. Um, so when you when you started in the business, what were some of the first things that you realized? Okay, I don't know Indiana because you wasn't here. No. <laughs> so what did you do to, in order to learn the marketplace and to really get out here and to uh, make it happen? Thank God for navigation because, mm-hmm. you know, thank God that plug it in my phone and, and takes me where I need to go. Um, I, really, it was, it was studying. Like, it became not necessarily just a job for me, but it just became a lifestyle. Right. And it was more of working every single day and even you know throwing my kids when they were younger in the car they'd come to work with me they'd go showing with me by my clients to the day like I'll, I'll do a client appreciation every every year mm-hmm. and they'll see my kids and they'll be like oh my god I've known you since you were this big and, wow. and I'll see their kids in the same thing and mm-hmm. so it's just making sure that that I really got the lay of the land right right how do you see your business today um, and where are you today do you have a team? I do. Um, I do. How many people are on your team? Currently? I have a full-time assistant, and mm-hmm. I have two licensed team members. Okay. And um, I did, Eric's actually the newest member to my team, and Caitlin's been on my team. She was on the show as well mm-hmm. as Michelle. Okay. And um, I, I see my team growing, and um, it, in a sense of... Obviously, I would love to have more licensed agents under me too, to right. you know help grow the business and pass business to and, and what have you. I'm very selective when when it comes right. to that because you know yeah. you get a bad apple and, and you're you're screwed. Right. But um, so right now it's um we are focusing on one of them is focusing on buying one buyers one of them is focused on sales, okay. on um listings and um I I do have Eric that helps me stage houses as well because okay. I can't you know lift all that furniture by myself. So, but okay. so okay. and then um I've grown a little bit in a sense of um since the show instead of really getting a lot of uh, of buyers and sellers Mm -hmm. i've been getting a lot more um people reaching out to me and asking me to come and help design their house okay and um and so i've been working with some some private private clients and Mm -hmm. i have a house actually up in carmel that i'm working on now that's that's over ten thousand square feet that it's Mm -hmm. it's been a big a big project in addition to all the flips that i'm doing as well because i'm still flipping okay um took a little break from michael for a little bit so but um (laughs) but i i'm working on eight right now as we speak and so i've been you know um growing my team how do you manage that uh, I don't sleep. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm up at like three in the morning, yeah. uh, going online and trying to find the best deals to keep on budget, but with the mm-hmm. house looking good. So mm-hmm. it, it's hard to manage, but I have good people in place now, okay. you know, and I think that, that it, you go through growing pains, you, you know, and yeah. I've only, I've been flipping for, you know, four years going on four years and it's, it's, you learn what to do and what not to do. Yeah. And I always remember what did it work because I don't want to go through another growing pain again. Right, right, and right. so that's really getting contractors are, are the hard as you I'm sure they're, they're the hardest people to to to. It's one to be honest with you in New York is very hard to flip because just the 
the price point. Well, never mind the price point. Yeah. How the heck are you gonna get the materials yeah. in the yeah. like? How does yeah. I don't even want to know no. how that works. It, well, it is a struggle, and the struggle is real. But um, the thing about New York, because the you you really have what co-ops and condos yep. and townhouses. Mm -hmm. That's it. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, so you're not driving up to a ranch house. You're not driving yep. up to you know this estate with ten thousand square feet. That just doesn't happen. Oh, if it is ten thousand square feet, it's in the sky and it's costing you sixty to seventy five million dollars. Yeah. So it's a whole different bread and butter. It's a whole different ball game about how things people look at things. And I've always interested in a place like Indy where you do you can flip houses. Mm -hmm. um, is it a good market to flip houses? And is the market moving in that direction, or is it something right now where the market is on pause? Do you see the recession coming? What is the market like right now for you? Well, okay. So I know everybody has their own opinion on things, okay? Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to give you my opinion. I'm not saying my opinion is right or wrong or what have you, but I, I've i always been the person to stay away from what everybody else is doing, okay? okay? Mm -hmm. um, it's in my nature, okay? Right. So if there's an area that you have five or ten flippers going in, I'm not going there. Right. I'm not. I'm going to create... I'm going to create new a, a new area. And I'll mm -hmm. tell you what, it, it when it comes to flipping, it really, it depends on the area in the house because it's, it's every, every house and location is going to be different. Like there's some areas in India, in Indianapolis that are going to sell quicker than others, right. just based on the location alone okay. mm -hmm. and whether they're, they're updated or whether they're not updated. So, so first of all, like you really have to have somebody that you're working with that's experienced and know, knows the surrounding area but i'll tell you what there was a house that um that i flipped about uh i think we closed it in july mm -hmm. and i was nervous i got it i was nervous for the appraisal i was like oh i told my investor that that i flipped with and i was like listen you know i think you could get 169 for this house mm -hmm. but it might be pushing it just no leave leave room in there so if right. it doesn't appraise because i'm pushing it on this right so the house got done man it was beautiful it was so beautiful mm -hmm. i was like you know what let's just throw the car see what happens let's list it for like 180 let's mm -hmm. see what happens we sold it in an appraised for 190. wow so the flipper on the corner decides mm -hmm. to wait to see what my house sells for to sell his house right. so he got 190. so don't you know that i picked up two other houses right around the corner that i'm flipping right now i'm like oh i got two good comps right now <laughs> right, so right, so right. it's just a way to also help the help the, the, the area grow right. yes yes and speaking of that gentrification is a big topic mm -hmm. Right now, mm -hmm. do people look at you as the evil doer coming in, gentrifying neighborhoods? You know, how what? do you feel about that as a realtor? You know what? I'll tell you. Mm -hmm. Um, all the houses, you know, when we were just talking about sweet spots, mm -hmm. my sweet spot is under that 400 mark. Right. So I'm not the one going in and and changing and, and to a million dollar neighborhood. Like, mm -hmm. I'm not doing that. Right. Like, uh, quite frankly, as as diva ish as I am, I know I'm sassy, I, I love style and stuff like that. But I am from a from a standpoint of the area and the price point that I like to be at. I like to keep it if I could do all my houses under 300,000. Mm -hmm. I would. Okay, I would. Okay. Is that the median? Uh, what's average the median sale. The average, house sale price in uh, Indy? Uh, just under two. It's like one ninety seven, I think. Wow. Okay. Yeah, something like that. Okay. So, okay. Um, and then of course, if you go a little bit more north, and right. the price point goes up. But what, what are the industries here in this city that keeps the, the, the economy going? Well, Lily's here. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So right. you have Lily. You have Del um, You have Lily. You have Delta faucets, mm -hmm. which they're building. It's very cool. It's up north, but mm -hmm. um, it's in Carmel. Okay. And then obviously, you know, you have we have the Colts, we have the Pacers, right. and um, so that's where you get your high end. A lot of CEO, yep. yeah, a lot of IT okay. Salesforce. Okay, all right. Is um, what 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 are the happening areas? What's the it neighborhoods now? Um, <clears throat> um, are you are you only speaking downtown or no? Like well, just just in it, you know, all over the city. Okay. So if you had to put some people, let's just say South, North, and Central, mm -hmm. where would you put? Them? Uh, well, actually, that's a great story. I have a client moving from um, from Chicago, okay, and they're moving to Indy. And I took them to just look at areas. That's all we did. We didn't. Mm -hmm. We looked at a few houses, but I said I'm going to take you because I don't want you to get into a situation where you're moving to a city that you've never lived in and you hate the area. Right. So right. she was like adamant. I want to be in Fountain Square. I want to be in Fountain Square. I took her to Fountain Square. She's like, I don't want to be okay. in Fountain Square. <laughs> so I was like, okay, right. let's 
to move it out. So yeah. so then we went to Meridian Hills. Then we went to, you know, Broad Ripple. Then we went, I was like, well, Carmel is really doing some great stuff downtown, Carmel, from a walking perspective and, right. and what have you. So she's like, well, I really don't think I want to be in Carmel. Well, let's just go to Carmel. Mm -hmm. So then she's like, okay, I want to be in Carmel. So at the end of the day, it really, it, it, it depends on, you know, how old they are, like what they're looking to right. do at night. Like, do they the want nightlife? Do they want, do they want to be near parks? Do they want to be downtown the city? Like, right. You know, right. so that's kind of. Where do you see the city going, changing? Man, well, considering I, I feel I've only been here for twelve years, but mm -hmm. I've seen the growth is unbelievable. Right. However, okay, mm -hmm. <laughs> I will say, you know, coming from a city right. that is um, very compact, shall we say? Yes. There are <laughs> there are a few streets that I drive down, and I'm like, oh lord, I'm gonna feel like I'm gonna be in Boston in the next couple of years. Because they're they're turning, you know, two lanes into one lane because oh, okay. people decide that they want to put, you know, bike lane. yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, bike lanes and you know, uh, medians and yes. and I I'm just I, 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 I'm sweating All a little bit at, at, at walking and I'm like, did did I, I hope they really did their homework? Whoever was <laughs> was in charge of this development because right. living through uh, the big dig. Right. I lived through that, yeah, right. so that was horrific. Right. And and I just that's the one thing that that you know kind of you know I, I hope I don't get in trouble saying that, but no, uh, but no, it's no, it, it's true. real. But I think that what they're doing ever since the Super Bowl came has mm -hmm. been incredible. I think the the money that they've poured into downtown has mm -hmm. has worked. Mm -hmm. I feel like there is. Um, you know, there, there's just a lot more to do downtown now than what there was 10 years ago. Right. right. Not that I go out, but, you know. <laughs> how, do you, really... how do you keep yourself ahead of the pack? I try not to be like the pack. Okay. You know, mm -hmm. throw me to the wolves and I'll end up running the pack, you know. Okay. So I, mm -hmm. I don't I don't try to conform to what everybody else is doing. Mm -hmm. And I learned that getting into this business because mm -hmm. everybody would tell, well, you need to do this, you need to do that. But you know what, what they do, that that just doesn't work for me. Right. And I think for me, it's it's not changing who I am. Mm -hmm. You know, I am a little bit different than the average here, but that's okay. Mm -hmm. Where I feel like some people think I'm gonna be their cup of tea and some people I'm not, and that's okay too. Mm -hmm. So I would just, for me, when I meet with people that are trying to get into this business and, and asking me for advice and all that, I tell them, just be you. Right. Because at the end of the day, that's what's gonna sell you. Okay. You really have three unique businesses in one. Mm -hmm. You're a realtor, you flip houses, mm -hmm. so you're an investor in mm -hmm. that way, and then you also stage. Mm -hmm. So what do you like out of the three? Which ones do you prefer? <laughs> I absolutely love designing. Okay. I do. It's it's a a creative side that outside of fashion, you know, mm -hmm. well, and, and to me, design is still fashion. It's just not... Um, you right. know, I just don't style a person, I style a house. Right. But I feel like um, going into an empty space that is um, destroyed, that has mold everywhere, that is just torn down and needs to be rebuilt, mm -hmm. that's my passion, like making it beautiful again. Okay. That's okay. what I love. All right. And then taking you back, taking us back to the show, Flipping mm -hmm. Exes. So you're in there with your ex. Yes. My ex-boyfriend, Michael. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about Mr. Michael. Mr. Michael. How did this all come about? <laughs> okay. So, Michael and I dated for a little bit. Mm -hmm. And we, we dated for over a year. Well, I guess it depends on who you talk to. Because <laughs> we, we have different opinions, all as right, always. Right. So, we dated for a little bit. And then um, we broke up. Okay. And I knew he was in construction. But while we dated, we really didn't talk, about talk or work. No. or We talked about it, but we didn't really work together. And then okay. when we broke up. He... You know, started kind of coming around a little bit more, mm -hmm. and um, don't they always? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Can't get rid and of him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's kind of what happened. I just kind of couldn't get rid of him. <laughs> and, and so I say that in a loving way, Michael. <laughs> if you're listening to this, <laughs> but um, so so we just <laughs> we were driving one day. Mm -hmm. Now we have this like love. I want to strangle you relationship. Okay, right, right. and and he's very even keeled he doesn't go up he doesn't go down where i'm just you know i'm up all the time and when i'm down i'm down and you know it you right, know right and so we were driving and of course if anybody watches the show mm -hmm. they'll talk about my driving skills and um 
or my lack of driving skills, maybe. <laughs> and um, <laughs> and, one of the, and one of the things I actually almost killed Michael, but that's a, that's a whole different that's topic. Okay. Anyway, and um, we were just driving, and I he was like, "Where are you going?" I was like, "I'm going, I'm going on 31." Mm -hmm. He was like, "You going the wrong way?" I was like, "No, I'm not." And so of course it comes into a huge argument, mm -hmm. and um, so then I I looked at him and I said, "You know what? I've been thinking about something." I said, "I think God gave you another idea," and he's like. Oh, my God, let me hear this one. Yeah. And I said, I said, no. I said, I, I think we should start a YouTube channel. Okay. And he was like, let me hear this. And I was like, we need to call it Flipping X's. And he wow. said, okay. that might be the smartest thing you've ever said to me. And I was, mm -hmm. he, he still might say that that probably mm -hmm. is the smartest thing I've ever said to him. But, okay. And then it just kind of tumbleweed from there. Like, okay. And that's how the show came about? Yeah, like I, we did a video and there was this woman in New York who mm -hmm. was affiliated with, um, Bobby Flay okay. and uh, Rock Shrimp and mm -hmm. they uh, she saw the video and she thought we were hilarious and we were really funny and she called us and so when she called we were like oh yeah ha ha yeah right, right. like right. I'm sure somebody wants to talk to us we thought it was just you know whatever right. but then they were like no really we want to do a video conference with you so we were like oh snap like really you really mm -hmm. want to do it mm -hmm. so we did the video conference and then they were like oh my god you guys are fabulous like we want to come there and do a sizzle so then right. they flew their whole production team here. We did a sizzle okay. and I was like, is this really happening? And I didn't really didn't think anything was going to come about. Oh, I right, didn't. Right, right. And then um, they called me on, um, it was on Valentine's Day. Oh. Production company called me and they said, you know, my God, Bravo, they, they want to sign you. I was like, what? Yeah. I was like, wait, are you talking to me? me? Like, right, 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 right. Need a clip? Need a clip? <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Oh, good. So what's the reality of reality? The, the reality of reality Yeah, is, what's the reality of reality I, TV? I, I, <laughs> or is there one? I, well, I, I will say it is so much more work than what you think. Yeah. It mm -hmm. really is. And I, I think that it was a learning experience. It was great. Um, I learned a lot. I learned a lot about like <laughs> being on TV mm -hmm. behind what Just goes saying. on. Mm -hmm. And I also learned, um, I feel like I grew also as a person. Okay. And um, and I think that it, it was a valuable, I learned some valuable lessons and some of them were hard lessons to learn. Mm -hmm. And, um, but at the end of the day, you know, when you go through stuff, it only, it only makes you stronger, so. Right, right, right. And so um, are you coming back for season two? Do you know yet? Lord, I hope so. So I would tell all your fans to go mm -hmm. check out Flippin' X's on Bravo and uh, Amazon Prime and tag Flippin' X's that you, uh, or tag Bravo TV that you want us to come back if you like us. Okay. Anyway, okay. so. So what's new for 2020? 2020, man, I, I have, um, I started a new business and mm -hmm. it's called Sleek by Nina K. Okay. And we are focusing, I teamed up with uh, one of actually the investors on the show. Mm -hmm. um, he is the investor for Ruckle, mm -hmm. um, which is the blue house, we call it. And um, so he and I teamed up and we are working on remodeling right now and doing design work together. So. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So how do you love the way you live? I, I <laughs> you know what I just I love my job okay. I do I think that if anything I, I probably need to have more of a balance because okay. I don't do it like I don't do anything I really just work unless you know some of my girlfriends decide to drag me out for dinner or something but right. at the end of the day I just I love what I do okay all right so imparting words for what you want to leave your fans and what are some of the life, life lessons that you've learned along the way in this journey and by being such a successful businesswoman? Because like I said, you, you're starting new stuff. You've been, you know, flipping X's, investing, all of that kind of stuff. What are three takeaways that you've learned? If one, if you wanted to be an investor, what are some of the uh, uh, things, what's some do's and don'ts? Let's mm -hmm. put it like that. Well, that was a lot of questions. Yeah. <laughs> that, was really it was. Nice. that was like six <laughs> questions in one. Like, okay, so let's so, start so, back. Okay, what so. the, for, as an investor, if you wanted to flip houses, what, what are the three things you would do and don't? I would tell you to make sure, first and foremost, do not even buy a house unless you have your crew lined up. And not a crew that you just hired, that you haven't seen their work, somebody that you have worked with. Right. That's that's the first and foremost. And then obviously um, double checking and triple checking the area mm -hmm. and counting your costs. Like, and, and 
making sure that you are, yes, you stay on budget, but also that you put the proper things in the house right. in order to sell it. Right. Like, don't just, I'm sorry, but some investors don't have design taste. Even if it means hiring a designer, hire and one. Then, yes, and yes. I, I'm available if there's anyone so there that needs it. <laughs> so, That's the biggest downfall. Like, you can always tell a developer who did not have an interior yes. designer on their staff. Yes, yes. Because they're missing closets. Yes. They have the floor plan is terrible. terrible. Doesn't flow. Don't yeah, flow. I totally agree. Totally, totally. Yep. The wasted space yes. throughout the house. You can tell immediately. You sure can. And and some of the, the choices of the fixtures. Yeah. You know, okay, you're just going to go to a big box store and pay $100 for this house and you're trying to sell five hundred for right. 600000 No, that doesn't work. Right. You know? Right. I, w I will say from a standpoint of, you know, overcoming obstacles mm -hmm. uh, and what I mentioned earlier about just being you, I feel like this is probably the most important thing that I, I would want to share with somebody. You know, I, I grew up, um, I went to public schools mm -hmm. and didn't grow up in, you know, the greatest area or whatever, but um, like I, I struggled with dyslexia my whole life. Mm -hmm. You know, I always, I didn't even know I had dyslexia until I went to, until I went to high school. Okay. So I just thought I was dumb, you know, and I, and I feel like it, it wears on somebody's, you know, self-conscious mm -hmm. mm -hmm. not self-conscious but yes. your your self-esteem yeah. and i think i always tried to um to hide who i was okay. and the one thing that the show really helped me understand and one of the producers actually helped me understand this was you know embrace who you are it's okay that you're not perfect because you know what not and nobody's perfect so don't try to be perfect wow. and i feel like that is that was really powerful for me as a woman and as a business owner mm -hmm. and as somebody who, you know, I have ADHD, I have dyslexia, I'm like, damn, I'm just like so jacked up. Like, oh but at the end of the day, I mm -hmm. am, but you know what? I realize it's okay. Yeah, and you're your own little unique you know, package. Yeah. Yes. That's what yes. you have to offer and sell. Yes. So that's one business. So the other business is from a design perspective, mm -hmm. what are the three things you look at from a design perspective? Do's or don'ts? Um, <laughs> stay, all right. It, it's, we're going into 2000, to, to 2020, okay? 2020. 2020. Did I say 2020? Yeah, 2020. I'm yeah. sorry. I, I got excited to say this, yeah. okay? Because don't get stuck in 1999. Okay, because mm -hmm. there's so many times where I'll go into a house and they'll be like, oh, we just redid it. Oh my God, yeah. you redid it? Like, what? <laughs> like, this kitchen cost me $20,000. Yeah. Who designed that it for you? Because, right. well, yeah. we just went to, you know, this store, that store. Oh, honey, we mm -hmm. need to have a conversation. Right. So you need to stay, if you're going to make a change, make sure that you keep up with the trends because this is the thing. Mm -hmm. If if you're only listening and if you're not really doing your own due diligence, and listening to just one person or two people of what they tell you, mm -hmm. you they might be telling you a trend that, yeah, was like five years ago. Right. Okay, if I walk into a house and I see one more house that's brand new that has brushed nickel in it, I'm going to scream. Mm -hmm. It is not in. Take that out of the house. Don't redo it within in the house. It's not, it, I'm right. sorry. Right. So I just feel like keep, if you're going to do the design, keep it, like make sure you're talking to people that actually have a sense of style. Uh, <laughs> know what they're doing no, I know. that mm -hmm. want to that want to give you advice so that that's that and also i think that i think that when you design you have to think about how you live like if it's your house you have to think about how you live if you're designing a house to sell it you have to think about like every house i go into i think of okay let me let me remember what my buyers told me mm -hmm. like whether it because it doesn't matter the price point whether it's a million dollar price point here or whether it's a two hundred thousand dollar house buyers all want the same thing right. it's just going to be on a smaller scale right so keep that in the back of your mind when you're doing it mm -hmm. okay and then from a realtor perspective mm -hmm. some of the do's and don'ts for buyers and sellers that when you look at uh and from a buyer's perspective mm -hmm. what should buyers be looking at right now when they're getting ready to go in the market what advice would you give a buyer I, who's looking to get into the market? I would say, um, I'm probably going to get hate emails from this one, but mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm like, I'm just being honest. Don't call the realtor on a sign. Like, I don't know how the, the, the laws work in, in, uh, in, New York. in New York, like when it comes to dual agency. Mm -hmm. Don't do that. Like get it, get an agent to represent you fully right. and, and check different areas. Right. And I always tell buyers, like when I relocated here, I should have never, we should have never bought the house that we bought. Mm -hmm. We lasted three months and we sold it because we should not have been in that area. Wow. And I mm -hmm. think that having, when you work with a buyer, you got to have honest conversations with them. Mm -hmm. And like, and granted, we can't steer one way or another. Right. And, and, you, and I'm not recommending that you do that, but you have to get to know what a buyer wants right. and not just assume that it's what you think that they want. Right. Have those discussions. Yes. And then for selling, man, I'll tell you this. You've got to have your house staged. If you do not have your house staged, 
You're just not gonna sell. You're you're not gonna get what you mm-hmm. what you should Trouble for the house. house. Yeah. yeah. And you always need to have to make sure your touch points, yes. kitchen and baths, Kid- are updated. Absolutely. And if they're not updated, they need to at least be painted. Yeah, I agree with you. Yes. And and you know what I. I think people don't, uh, yeah, oh, I feel you on that one. I think, though, people do not understand mm-hmm. the value of paint. They don't. They, I it's mean. The easiest, it's the cheapest interior design that you can do. Hands down. Board. Hands down. Yeah. Hands paint. down. Mm-hmm. Yep. And keep it with the modern color of what's going on right now. Because when you walk in, you will see exactly yep. that's the thing. And I will yeah. tell you right now, everybody talking about graves. Graves, mm-hmm. graves, graves are about to go out. Yeah, it's about do to go out. Do not get y'all Yep. It's about to go. It's mm-hmm. going to the next color. Yep. Emerald green. <gasps> Ooh. You should look. 2020. Pantone. The new color is blue. That's <laughs> year coming up. So you got to know. You you have to uh you have to check out uh, my, my last episode. I'm going to send you a picture of what I did on the wall. Uh-huh. Okay. <laughs> So anyway, you guys, it's been a pleasure to have Nina Clem in the house. Thank you for coming through, Thank Nina. You. Thank you for having this me. This was such a delight to have to talk to someone else in the business, and especially outside of New York, because basically your market is really the rest of America's market. Mm-hmm. And so it really, you really speak to what a lot of people can do in the Orlando's of the world, the mm-hmm. Atlanta's of the world, the yeah. Las Vegas's of the world. Well, we can't do that really too much in the city because of the price point. So it was great to have you on and give a different perspective of what's happening out in the rest of mid-America. And good luck on your new show and good luck on 2020. And just remember everybody, continue to celebrate life and love the way you live. Let Let the sun shine. 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 Let the sun shine.